Hi everyone, so doing another quiz. It's currently pretty late at night, so I'm gonna be pretty quiet in this one, at least like the volume of my speech wise. I haven't done a quiz in a while, which is a shame. It's I really like doing quizzes. I think they're kind of like peak of my content, so hopefully I'll be able to get something good out here with this one. The quiz we got lined up for today is how you die in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory based on increasingly relevant questions. It says this is entirely based on what I remember from watching the Tim Burton movie when I was like eight, but I also added stuff to make it cooler. I watched both the Tim Burton and Gene Wilder versions when I was younger. I was kind of like, I grew up around the time when the Tim Burton movie came out, but I lived in like the middle of nowhere, so we're like back 20 years, so I also saw like the Gene Wilder is kind of my main, and so I'm, the, Tim, the whole Tim Burton angle, I'm not a huge fan of it, and I don't, the vibes are off on it, like, really, I just feel like Willy Wonka cared too much about the kids in that one, you know what I mean? Like, there wasn't enough Asha violations. That's, that's the only metric I have for watching movies, you know, like, I'm a big fan of Star Wars with all the open pits with no guardrails and all that. I mean like the original Star Wars, I don't know if they have Asha in the future. Anyways, this quiz is by Sapphic Salamand, it's a pretty cool name. And let's get started. Question 1 is, what's the superior type of chocolate? Kind of a racially motivated question, I were about equality on this channel so I'm not a big fan of that right off the bat, but to be honest, like, in general I do like darker chocolate, I like to punish myself with whatever I eat and just having that bitterness is a nice just like grating sense. I actually just finished what's called like Lint, is it? Pronounce Lent? That's a terrible name for a chocolate brand. Like, say what you will about Willy Wonka, at least he had some good branding. He didn't call his food Lint, but anyways, I had the Lint like 75% and it was good. I Something about the way they make the chocolate, like the way they set it, doesn't bode super well with me in terms of like my palate, but the chocolate itself, like the balance is good. Like the Kit Kats that they make that are dark are good, like 70%. So I'm gonna go with dark chocolate. I don't know why I keep having troubles like tracking my mouse. Maybe it's the pink background. Question two is for some reason the chocolate factory dress code states that you have to wear a Garfield shirt. Which one are you wearing? Okay, so the first shirt is Gamer. I feel like this one's trying a bit too hard to be ironic, like the whole fake acronym thing where you just slot in a phrase that doesn't fit the letter scheme. I think it's a bit played out at this point. Also, this Garfield is clearly sick, he's like purple, so like I don't want to advertise that I'm like four sick cats, you know, like Somebody needs to just take this boy to a hospital. Number two is Enemy of the State. I like this one. The font is nice and um, Comic sans -y. I'm pretty sure that's Comic Sans. These pictures are going to be bigger for you watching than they are for me doing this quiz right now. Garfield has a similarly, like, Garfield 2 has pretty, like, despondent, I think the term is. So he's got a pretty despondent look. That's good vibes. Third one is Gay Garfield. I, it's interesting that this is the first one with a proper black background, but I'm pretty sure this is taken from like a fake book cover jacket. Also, it's thematically, it's a little too on the nose. I don't even really know what I mean by that, but let's move on. Number four is Cowboy. Number four is Cowboy. It says, when I die, I may not go to heaven. I'm not sure if they let cowboys in. This is a particularly haunting shirt for me. Like, I know all Garfield shirts are haunting, but this one in particular, I'm kind of like from a pretty yeehaw area, if you know what I mean? So like, my family mostly is kind of like cowboys. That being said, we all probably will go to hell for reasons other than being cowboys, so I guess having weighed it all out, it's not really that big of a curse. But still, like, there's other souls out there that may be damned to eternal torment for the mere fact of being a cowboy. And I don't know if I can stand for that, even through the distance that the medium of t-shirt provides. 
Number five is Evangelion. And it sure just says Neon Genesis Evangelion. I actually, I saw Neon Genesis Evangelion memes on Pinterest so much, I just caved and watched the show like about a month ago, I think. And I didn't like it. And honestly, I think the idea of taking your views of like a show like that, like this is clearly meant to promote the show. I feel like taking your own personal twisted views and putting them in the mouth of a innocent heroic young man like Garfield is kind of a twisted thing to do. The vibes on this shirt are absolutely terrible. Like this makes me sick. Number six is you are not immune to propaganda. The problem with this first off the meme, it's from a meme. The meme itself is good. I find a lot of memes go steal, but this one is still like spot on for me. But just wearing a meme on a t-shirt in general is kind of a red flag to me. Also, this is the same guy that was wearing the Neon Genesis Evangelion and the Gay Garfield shirts. So I just, I'd like to know what this guy's up to. Like, given those three things combined, I'm pretty sure this guy needs to be on a watch list. The fact that he would just proudly display all three of these in public, like, that's basically a dog whistle, like, he needs to be, like, a suspect for some, for being in some alt-right terrorist groups, you know what I mean? And our last option is I Hate Mondays. They call it Skateboard Smiley Face. This one is too obviously playing on the whole Garfield craze because it's drawn. The art style honestly is nice, but that kind of artificiality rubs me the wrong way. By the way, we got a question was that this is our like Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory dress code. So I'm guessing he's going to judge whether or not we get the factory, at least in part based on what shirt we wear. I don't know what the tax status is like, or the general legal state of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, but given how extravagant a lot of the things are in it, they're dodging their taxes, and because of that, they will inevitably have a lot of conflict with the their local government, maybe even up to like the federal level. And because of that, I think they would appreciate a good enemy of the state t-shirt. Like, I think they would see me wearing this t-shirt and they would just assume that like, I also don't pay my taxes and therefore am an ally. And they would be more like, open to me, maybe even more willing to give me a raise, you know? Because they know I have the same approach as them, so... Question 3 is you're also allowed to bring a plush with you. Which will you bring? Number 1 is Murray from Splatoon. Splatoon overall, like, I'm sure the game itself is good, I'm sure a lot of the fandom is good, but I've just gotten a lot of weird vibes from there overall. Like I said, Mr. Wonka is going to be judging us. I don't think this will leave a good impression. The second plush is Omori. I want to play Omori, I've heard good things about it, but I haven't, so as for now, I don't know what kind of impression this will leave. I, as of right now, can't really say I stand for or against what this plush represents, because I don't know what those things are, so this option is good as a backup in case I don't get any good options, but I'd be more comfortable with something I'm more familiar with. The third is some sort of animal, it could be a cat, maybe a dog, but probably a cat, wearing a strawberry hat. This honestly reeks of hubris to me, the careless vacant expression on the cat's face, the sheer exaggerated pomposity of the hat. He's too proud. I feel like people are going to naturally want to antagonize such a figure. I don't blame them. That would be my natural reaction as well. But point is, I feel like this would draw in some ire that I don't necessarily want. Option four is Sans Undertale. I played a little bit of Undertale. It's not really for me. Also, speaking of weird fandoms, Undertale is really big for that. No offense to anyone, but like, I'm not super into this. Our fifth option is Hatsune Miku, who is far too big. Like, this would be good as like a centerpiece in your home as to like, show any visitors that you are a purveyor and appreciator of the fine arts. But keep in mind, this, these are plushes you're bringing into the factory, I presume. 
and trying to haul this in would be an ordeal to say the least. Now you may say that this may be a good thing, this might impress Mr. Bonka, but that is assuming you can pull it off, and I just simply don't trust myself in being able to maneuver with such a large object in tow. The last option is a Plague Doctor, which is a little played out, but it still has a good aesthetic. I think it's the most practical of all the ones I've seen, all the options, so, so far I am kind of opting to default to it. We'll see how that goes as we move on. And our last one is Cat Sphere. There's a famous joke in physics about spherical cows, I'll let you read it if you want to know what the joke is. But this has that kind of vibe to it to me. I feel like if I brought this in, he would know or think that I am a very scientifically minded individual. And he might be more leaning towards giving me some sort of employment or opportunity. But at the same time, he may be the kind of person that views science and art as opposing antagonistic forces and may see me as kind of unable to appreciate the grander beauty of his factory. That being said though, I'm sure I could convince him that's not the case otherwise, perhaps through a rousing song or interpretive dance. In either way, I feel like being true to myself is the one virtue I can stick to in this situation, so I'm going to go with the cat sphere, although the plague doctor was a close second. I wasn't sure whether or not to default on the cat sphere. It's not true for everyone really. You're never sure whether or not to default on the cat sphere. Question four is would you steal stuff? Obviously. Next. Question five is would you lie about stealing stuff? Obviously. Next. Question six is you're given the opportunity to choose a flavor of a new chocolate bar. Which flavor would you pick? The first option is I believe that is jam. I think that's already a thing. Like I'm sure fruit flavored chocolate, like I don't know what the difference between that and jam flavored chocolate would be. I don't think he'd be impressed by how close my suggestion is to a real thing, even if there is some difference. Like I'm pretty sure a lint as chocolate, like I said before, he may think I'm working for the competitor, he may think I'm a spy, I don't want that, so not big into the jam. Second is lava. The problem with this though is to be able to properly make chocolate with lava flavoring, you would need to be able to taste lava. And I feel like you would have to sacrifice people to the point of not being worth it in order to get one of them able to taste the lava before they die. Third option is glitter. I know glitter has often jokingly been compared to an STD in recent times, but I think in, from a marketing standpoint that's a good thing. We could lean into that with our new chocolate slogans. Pitching it to Mr. Wonk might be a bit difficult, but you just have to come up with a few catchy slogans. I mean, a lot of branding nowadays is focused on controversy. I'm pretty sure you could make a slightly distasteful statement about AIDS. That's really what sells chocolate nowadays. Number four it looks to be um, aquarium gravel, and this is already a thing. It's like chocolate rocks, rock candy, I don't remember what it's called, but this already exists. Number five appears to be what I believe are bath bombs, and I've never tasted a bath bomb before, so I wouldn't know what flavor this would make. I haven't interacted with a bath bomb of any kind in a very long time. Right, option six is all of them, which is kind of a cop-out. It requires the evils of each one of the individual flavors, like the sacrificing people to get the taste of lava, that sort of thing, so we're obviously going to want to avoid that. I think the best route is glitter, for reasons I mentioned. Oh, there is one more option. Literally, what is wrong with you guys? I'm sure Bonk is looking for a fellow eccentric to lead his company. This isn't going to be odd enough to catch his attention. Question 7 is did you eat Play-Doh as a kid? And the answer is I didn't have access to Play-Doh as a kid. So I did not get the 
chance. I mean, I got to play with it in like preschool, but by then you have teachers and stuff watching you and you're going to get in trouble, which to young me just wasn't worth the risk. So I didn't ever get the chance, but it's going to be on my bucket list. One day here, I'm just going to have to buy some Play-Doh and take a nice bite of it raw as opposed to cooked. Where do you even get Play-Doh from? Like, I haven't seen any for sale in years. I'm pretty sure you can make it though yourself, so that's good. Question 8 is opinion on sparkling water. I haven't had sparkling water in such a long time. I don't really remember what it's like. I vaguely remember it being very aggressively carbonated. Which I think masochism is supposed to pair with food. I'm a big fan of foods that hurt you, and I remember it hurting a fair bit drinking it. So I'm going for I Great I Love It. I Great I Love It. Is that what I said? Anyways, this is too good as like. I know hating it is kind of the popular thing right now, and it's nice to be kind of outside of the main bubble, if you know what I mean. Question 9 is choose an item I have in my room right now. First option is a little box full of stickers. I'm guessing they haven't been stuck to anything, so... Now, if you just haven't gotten a chance to use them, that's kind of valid. If they've been used, that's valid. But if you're, like, too scared to use them, then this object is telling me that you're a coward. And I don't think I can live in support of a coward. The second option is dark chocolate digestives. I don't know what digestives are, and I'm not going to look them up, but they sound gross, so I'm going to say no for this one as well. Third option is sketchbook that has Setchbook written on the cover, and I feel like that's a little too, like, try hard as a mistake. Like, that's when they have a kid come home from, like, grade three on a TV show and have him get addition wrong. Like, no child has ever gotten addition wrong. They just play it off of the cameras, you know that. Fourth option is Splatoon Amiibos displayed on a coffin shaped shelf. If I was a vampire and I came home to bed and there's a bunch of Amiibos in it, I would be pretty upset. I don't think I would be all that kind in the not in the... What am I talking about? <clears throat> I just lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. You'll never get to know what I was going to say because I don't know what I was going to say. Option five. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really bad. I'm so sorry about that. My train of thought just dissolved. It's like 3.30 right now, and I didn't sleep well last night, so I am a mess. Option five is bookshelf with exactly 10 books on it, six of which I've actually read. They're phrasing that like it's not, they haven't read very many of their books, but that's a honestly pretty high actually read rate. I get a lot of books, like I've worked at a library before, and they tend to have like discards from their like overflows, so I have like a lot of books from there that I've never gotten a chance to read, so you're doing just fine. Second last option is Sick Hollow Skull that lights up. His name is Steven. I don't know what hollow means in this context. I'm guessing it's not like just the metal is empty kind of hollow, but I could be wrong. But anyways, uh, I don't see how a skull can have a name independent of the rest of its body. I'm taking points off for that. The last option is tiny peach squishy that just spawned. I don't know how it even got here. I don't know what a squishy is. Like I said before, I am I was most impressed by the books, so I'm going with the bookshelf. Question 10 is if you were locked in a room for 24 hours with my Nintendo Switch as your only source of entertainment, what game would you play? Now, I don't have any new consoles. I don't have most of the new games, so I'm probably not going to have any point of reference for most of these. First one is Project Diva Mega Mix, which I have no reference for whatsoever. Option 2 is Splatoon 2. I know vaguely of Splatoon, but I, like I said, I've never played it. We have Animal Crossing's New Horizons. I've played, I think, like 20 minutes of Animal Crossing's game. I didn't have enough time to get into it. Maybe it's a good game, but I wouldn't know. And the fourth option is Minecraft. I'm terrible at it, but it's nice and open-ended. There's lots of options. This is probably going to be the easiest route. Number five is Undertale. Uh, like I said before, I'm not a big fan of Undertale. The style of comedy didn't really melt well with me, and the gameplay, I didn't 
It wasn't bad, but I didn't really connect with it. Number six is Mario Kart 8. Believe it or not, I have not played Mario Kart. I mean, I've played it like a little bit at friends' houses, but probably less than an hour in my whole life, so don't really have reference for this one. The last option is look through your album. I'm guessing that's a Switch feature. I don't have a Switch, so I don't know what this means. I guess I'm just going to go with the only game I've ever played on this list in any serious capacity, which is Minecraft. I'm guessing for this question, Billy Wonka doesn't get to see how well I do at the game. Because like I said, I'm terrible at Minecraft, but it seems like the best option. Question 11 is, are you afraid of death? I feel like this is a good question if you're going to the Wonka factory, because let's be honest, pretty much all of those kids died. Like, they all showed them as having some, like, weird change after the whole story is done, but none of that's real. They're all dead. But I would die for a chocolate factory, you know? So I'm gonna go with, um, no. Never find my mouse. And the last option is thanks for taking my quiz, lol. And I'm gonna say, uh, no problem. Read more of your books. Expand your mind. Get to the point where you're going to take over the world with the power of violence and your newfound book smarts. Yeah. And see what we get? I got whatever happened to Violet. Sorry. This is how I die in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like I said, the kids definitely died. She got turned into a blue sphere. I'm not a big fan of this because I'm pretty sure that's like inflation. I'm pretty sure that's a fetish thing. There could be all sorts of weird fan art of me on DeviantArt. So I'm not a big fan of that. We got kind of in the middle as our option so yeah as always five out of five for our rating i feel like this one pretty good i tapped into some energies part way through that i think would serve my channel well in the future i'm bummed out i lost my train of thought on that one answer i literally like fell asleep but hopefully this will all get smoother as we go on with time thank you for watching honestly this might end up being a shorter video I kind of paced this one a little different than my normal recording sessions, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, I'm going to stop talking now.